Hey, if you want to discover one simple sales principle to make more money, get more people to do what you want, and ultimately sell more of your products and services, stick around and watch today's video through until the very end as I'm about to share with you one of the best and one of the coolest sales strategies that will allow you to make more sales while being one of the good guys. As always, if this is your first video, my name is Mish Wilson, and over the course of the last few years, I've now done over $25 million in total sales, and really throughout that entire process, I have used this one principle, this one strategy to drive those sales and make the money that I've been fortunate enough to make. As always, if you get value out of this video, don't forget to let me know in the comments section below what your biggest takeaway is from this episode. And don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon notification button so that you're notified when I do more videos just like this. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Welcome to the Misha Wilson Show, where we show you how to create massive success online so you can enjoy the lifestyle of your wildest dreams. So before we dive into what the actual key is that I'm talking about, firstly, I wanna talk about what most people do wrong when it comes to getting people to do what they want, getting people to buy their products, and ultimately, usually, asking people for money. All right, so in today's world, unfortunately, and it's actually kind of phasing out or it's becoming less and less and less effective, I should say, but the biggest mistake that most people make is they pressure people to make a decision that that person might not want to make at that exact point in time. All right, so, you know, if you have someone wanting to or thinking about buying a coaching program and they're on the fence, you have a couple of options, right? Firstly, you can do it the cool way, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Or secondly, you can pressure that person. You can talk about, you know, all the things that are gonna, gonna go wrong, how their family is gonna suffer, how they're gonna suffer, how they're never gonna live up to their potential, how they're never gonna make the money they wanna make, how they're never going to, you know, get in shape like they wanna get in shape, depending on what you're selling. If they don't buy your product or your service, you can really hard pressure them based on fear and based on pain and based on deep emotional stuff, or you can do it the other way, all right? Now, the problem with the high pressure, fear-based, boiler room, kind of sleazy sales tactics is very simply this. Firstly, you're kind of a douche when you do them, right? So you are a douche when you do them. Secondly, even if it works, right? So if you have someone and you're on a phone call with someone and they're on the fence, and you get really hardcore with them when it comes to just pressure, 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 and you push them over the edge and they make the buying decision, what will naturally happen is within the course of about a week, that person's gonna want a refund, right? Because that person did not make the decision themselves to buy the program. They simply got pressured into making the decision from you, all right? They never adopted the belief that this is the right thing for me to do. They just got pressured by you to do it. And so whenever someone makes a decision that they don't actually believe is the right decision for them to make, that decision will very quickly be reversed, at which point you'll be left with an unhappy customer, someone wanting a refund, even if you have a refund policy that is you know, not allowing them a refund, A, that's not cool, and then B, you know, you'll have a charge back or something like that. It's just not fun to have those kind of circumstances, all right? But that's what most people do. They just kind of lean on pressure, 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 because that's all they know how to do. And so what I wanna talk about here is literally how to do the exact opposite and actually make more sales. And it comes down to the topic and the concept of reciprocity, all right? And that is very simply giving before you receive. All right, so I wanna think about the worst thing that I could possibly be asked to do. And uh, the first thing that pops to mind is if someone asked me to help them move, right? I hate moving myself. I can't stand it. It is the fucking worst. And if a buddy of mine asks me to help them move, I might just be dead for that weekend, right? Um, obviously, kind of some humor in that, but in the same sense, I absolutely hate it, right? It's not my thing. I pay people to move. When I move, I let them do it. I don't want to do it. I want no part of it. But let's say, as an example, I were I move, right? Which I never do this anymore because then I'll be locked into this. But let's say I were moving and I needed help moving. And I asked three of my buddies to help me move. And all of those buddies took a full day out of their lives to help me move. 
When those people move, any of those three buddies, they will then come to me and they will ask me if I can help them move. And naturally, just based on the fact that they helped me move, I will feel like I need to help them. Even though I absolutely hate moving, even though it's something I don't want to do, even though it's something that I would rather listen to nails on a chalkboard for a full day straight without any break, I can't stand it, right? I will probably end up doing it just based on the fact that they had already helped me in my move. And that's the power of reciprocity. Now, the thing, thing to understand here in this context is that most people actually want to buy, all right? So unlike with the movie example where I wanna do anything but, most people want to make a buying decision, they just don't want to be sold. All right, and that's a principle to remember. Most people love to buy, they hate to be sold. And so when you essentially with your sales presentations lead with giving value, giving tangible value, giving tangible resources, and then also giving feelings, and I'll talk about both of those here. When you lead with that, you naturally create that state of the person feeling like, God, he's giving me so much value, I need to give back. The same thing that I talked about with the moving, but you do it in the context of an environment where the person actually wants to do the thing that you're going to ask them to do. And when you pair those two up, your sales, literally, they just take off, right? And so the first way you give before you ask for the sale, right? Let's say you're doing this on a webinar, just for an example. We'll do a webinar for the first hour or so. It's all training. And then the second hour is a pitch, right? So it's a 50-50 style of setup. And the first hour I am giving, you know, let's say it's a traffic webinar. I'm gonna show them where to get traffic. I'm gonna show them my best ads. I'm gonna give them ad templates. I'm gonna give them resources that they can use immediately after they leave the webinar, whether or not they buy my product or service, right? So I'm already giving them stuff when it comes to training in a tangible way. Now what I'm also doing, which is of equal of, if not even more importance, is I am giving them the feeling that they can do this. I'm giving them the feeling that they can accomplish success with what I'm training. And therefore, I am subconsciously elevating my prospect status, which is one of the things that is most valuable to a human being, right? Really human beings mo make most all decisions based on having their status increase. And so when you can do that to your prospect, your prospect naturally feels an immense sense of you giving tons of value and therefore wants to give back. All right, now how do you do that? Very simply, you train in a way where you're very cognizant of instead of overwhelming, instead of saying, God, I'm gonna give so much value that they're just gonna wanna pull out their credit cards and give me their money. Instead of doing that, you train in a way where very methodically, you make them understand and feel like they can accomplish success with the thing. All right, so instead of showing them, you know, let's say it's a traffic webinar, instead of showing them the Facebook power editor and showing them every single button in the back office and totally overwhelming them, which would lead to a state of almost anti-reciprocity, would lead to a state of them feeling overwhelmed, them feeling not as smart as they were before they got on the webinar and therefore they would have no desire to buy your product. Instead of doing that, you would show them the overview of the Facebook editor and then you would show them the one button to press that will have the highest impact and also give them ad copy, done for you ad copy to use when they press that button to launch that ad, right? So then in their mind, God, all I gotta do is I gotta log in, I gotta look at the Facebook power editor here, I click this button, I already have this copy, I can do that. When they start thinking and believing that they can do that, their status subconsciously is elevating in their mind based on what you've given them information-wise. All right, and therefore reciprocity kicks in and you make a ton of sales. And so ultimately, whenever you lead with value, both in the context of tangible value, you know, things that you're giving, frameworks that you're giving, ad scripts that you're giving, a done for you copy that you're giving, whatever it might be, a report, right? And then also giving them value in the context of the feelings that you are giving them you will build up immense reciprocity. And then when you get to the sales pitch, it is literally just, you get your prospect to a point where they absolutely love you. You've given them a ton of value. You've trained a way where they see that they can do this. 
And then the obvious decision is, God, I need this thing. If the prospect has the money to do it, if the prospect, you know, at that point in time feels trust with you, which they will, if you do what I just talked about, making the buying decision is an automatic. You don't need the high pressure stuff. You don't need the, you know, boiler room sales tactics. As long as you make a good offer, offer a good guarantee, take the risk away, and ultimately create an irresistible offer, you don't even really need to sell it. So with that said, I hope you got a ton of value out of this episode of The Misha Wilson Show. As always, if you did, let me know in the comment section below what your biggest takeaway was. And don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon notification button so that you're notified when I do more videos just like this.